Welcome back to my tutorial series on how to make a game using Flutter and Flame, and in this episode we're creating our player character and adding them to the game. So let's get started. Since we're going to be using images for our character, the first thing we're going to do is head on over to our PubSpec YAML file, and under our assets section we need to import the assets what we're going to be using. Uh, so we can do this by doing assets images, and if we go into assets images we actually see that we have a folder right here called main characters, so we can call main characters. And then inside of this folder, we actually have four different characters that we can use. Mask Dude, Ninja Frog, Pink Man, and Virtual Guy. So we're actually going to add in all of them right now. This way we can use them. And also this way you can choose the different characters that you might want. So we can go ahead and add in all four of them right now. Uh, we'll be using them now in case you want to use a different character. But then of course, when we create a character select screen, uh, we'll make sure that they're already in here because I always forget to add them. <laughs> um, so you can hit control shift and then down uh, to duplicate your line of code and then just rename them to the other person, uh, other character. And then of course, make sure that you do have spaces where there are spaces uh, so you don't get any errors. So there we have mass dude, ninja frog, pink man, and virtual guy. We can hit save, it'll save everything and we can close out of our PubSpec YAML. Now with our PubSpec YAML done, what we want to do since we're going to be using images is we want to head on over over to our pixeladventure.dart file and we want to add our images into cache so that we can use them when we need them. Um, to do this we can go to our onload event under where we've added the camera in the world should be okay. Uh, what we can do here is we can uh, load in our images uh, from cache and we can actually do this actually probably above just to make sure that they're done before we try to use them. So we'll call await because we're using await we do need to change our on load to async and then we'll do await limit uh, images dot load and we're getting an error here images dot load all and we have two options here we can either load all which allows us to give a list of the specific images that we want to load I would think if you have a lot of images in your game loading all of them at once could make the game take longer to load so you could use the load all and specify most of the images you'll use here and then later if you're going to use them later in the game you can call them before you load them but for right now we're actually just going to do load all images and it's going to take every single image that we have that we're using and just load them into our cache. But like I said, if there's a lot of images, this could cause issues, but so far uh, it works fine. So we'll just do it that way and it saves us some coding. Um, and then we're just going to add a comment here. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, load all images into cache. And then that way we can just come back in the future and make sure that we know what this does. Great. So now that we've loaded our images into cache, we can start using them. So what we can do is we can come over to our lib folder and we're going to create our player. So to do this, we can make a new folder and then uh, the folder, you can call it whatever you want, but we're just going to call it actors. That seems like the common practice to do. So I'll continue that practice, I guess. And then inside the actors folder, we'll make a uh, full file called player.dart. And this is going to be our player class, which is going to be our player, which is awesome. We're already making a player. Let's go. So we will create a class and this class will be called player with a capital P. And then our player has the ability to extend another component. And this component depends depending on the type of animations we're using would depend on which one we're going to use. Because we're going to have states, which means that our player could do stuff like running or idle or jumping or falling, it's going to be a best practice to use a, uh, we're going to extend a sprite animation and then we could just do a component, um, but we're actually going to do a group component. And a group component just means that, hey, I'm going to have a lot of animations. Um, and that's where the whole group comes from. I have a group of animations and I want an easier way of switching between them. Uh, so that's why we're using that. You could do the exact same thing with a sprite animation component. Um, I just feel like if you have a lot of animations or a lot of different states, it's better to use the group component uh, just so you can switch between them and keep them all uh, together but either way uh, would work I actually just learned about the group component uh, in my testing I was using just the regular component so it works either way it just changes the code a little bit cool 
So now that we have our player extending our uh, sprite animation group component, what we want to do first is we want to add in an animation so we can actually see our character. So to do this, uh, we're going to do late, um, and I'll get to that in a moment while we're calling it late, but we're going to do late, final, and then sprites animation, still an animation, and then this one will just be called idle animation. And again, you can call these whatever you want, but I just like to know that this is idle animation. Now with our idle animation, what we want to do now is we actually want to set our idle animation, which is why we use the keyword late. Uh, late means that we don't know what it is yet. We'll do it later. <laughs> um, and then uh, we need to do that now. So we can call our onload. And inside of our onload, we could put everything here, but this is going to get complicated fast because we're going to add a lot of stuff possibly to our own on to our onload event. Um, so what we can do is we can make a method that we use um, that just onload will call that method and then we can keep all of our code nice and easy together and we can know exactly what it is. So what we'll do is we'll do underscore, underscore means it's a private uh, method. So we can do underscore on load. Um, we can do load all animations and you can call this whatever you want whatever makes sense for you in the future we can do load all animations and then we are getting an error so we need to hit control period and then we'll get the option to create a method for us which is great and now we have the method that's going to return a void uh, technically um, we could uh, change it if we need to return anything else but for now that is completely fine so now that we are going to be calling our load all animations at the very beginning when our on loan is triggered Triggered, what we want to do is we want to say what those animations are. Well, we already have one animation, so we can set our idle animation. And with our idle animation, what we want to do here is we actually need to create the animation itself. And to do this, we can do equals, and then it is a sprite animation. And we don't want to use just sprite animation. There's a different options that we can use. Uh, so we'll do the period and we'll do sprite animation from frame data. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to pass in an image. Um, and then it also allows us to pass in the data so that we can explain how do we want this image, the sprite sheet that we're giving, how do we want it split up so it actually makes sense and shows the cracked images. So for our image, we actually need to get a reference since we cast our images, we need to get a reference of our actual game class. And the easiest way to do that is up here where we extend sprite animation group component, we have another word that we can use which is with. And essentially it's exactly what it sounds like. We're going to uh, extend sprite animation group control uh, component with something else. And you'll see this a lot. We can add a lot of different uh, things after width, depending on what we're trying to do in our game. And for here, we're going to do has game ref. And then we need to do the uh, open bracket, uh, the less than sign. And then we'll type in the class of our game, which is pixel adventure. And then we'll close it with the um, greater than sign. Is that the right one? Like, yeah, less than the greater than. Perfect. But now we actually have reference to our game. So in our image, we can actually call game, which is built into that game ref. You can also call game ref. Uh, they should be the same thing. Um, but we'll just do game and then game dot images which is what we did earlier, just so you're aware here, await images dot load all images is built in. So we're going to call those images so we can do game dot images dot from cache, which is we've cached them at the beginning. So now we just need to call the cached images, not new images, but the ones that we've cached. And then we need to pass in the directory or the location of those images, which again was main characters, capital M and C slash, let me make this so you can easy, see it easier, slash, and then we want to do our character. So right now we'll start off with the ninja frog because I like him. We'll do ninja frog and then slash, and then we need to give it the animation uh, for our idle animation. And if you're not sure what that is, you can go to assets, images, main characters, ninja frog, and then they're all actually the same, but we have the idle animation right here. So we need to call this. So it's capital I idle and then space 32 by 32 in parentheses, 
and then .png. So this is actually the image. Again, we put it uh, right here, we've cached it. Now we're calling this specific one and now we have our image, which is great. Now with our image, if we load this up in case you haven't looked at them yet, our images are in a sequence, which just means that there's only one row. Um, some sprite sheets could be different rows. You could have multiple rows. You could have pretty much every character on a sprite sheet. If you ever look at uh, you know games back from NES era, they were all just all images on one section. Um, but for us, these assets are very split up, very nice and tidy, and they're all just one sequence of it. So with that, what we can do is we actually have the ability to say, hey, this, uh, this is a sequence. So we can do that by doing sprite animation. It's already there, data, and then we can do dot sequenced. And this says that, hey, this is essentially a straight line. <laughs> uh, these are just what I have here. And then I'll tell you exactly how to split it up, but you don't have to worry about different locations. Again, there are other ways to do that. We won't be going over that in this video, um, but there are other ones if your uh, you know, sprite sheets are split up like that. Um, there is a way to use them, but we're going to go with this because it's a little simpler and that's how our uh, assets are set up. So as you can see here, I'll make this easier to uh, read for you. So with our uh, sprite animation data sequence, it's asking for three uh, pieces of information. We need the amount, we need the step time, and we need a texture size. Well, the texture size, we already know what it is. It's right here. So we can make a vector two. And because they're both the same, 32 by 32, we can actually do vector two dot all and then 32 which is essentially is the same as writing vector two, x is 32, y is 32. Now, as for the step time, the step time, depending on the animation, could vary. Ours don't, um, but depending on what your animation is, it could. And the uh, the creator of these assets do actually put on the itch.io page that it's uh, 20 FPS or 50 milliseconds. So 50 milliseconds is 0 0.5, um, and then that is the same as 20 FPS, which is essentially how. So we're gonna be using 0 0.5. However, even though this is kind of exactly what we know it is, step time is 0 0.5, it's not good practice to use random numbers like this that are just somewhere in your code, um, especially if you need to change this later. You don't want this to be hard-coded. You want it to be a variable that you could change. So we can actually come up here uh, to our top and then we will actually do a final double because it has um, uh, uh, decimal and then we will do we'll just call it step time is fine and then by default we'll make it equal uh, 0.5 and I apologize it's not 0.5 it's 0.05 0.5 is uh, super fast so it's 0.05 and again let's say I made all of these uh, 0. Uh, five and then realize my mistake when well, I have to change all of them. So it's definitely good to use variables in stuff that's going to A, stay the same or possibly change in the future just so you don't have to go through all the code because we're going to have a lot of this code. Great. Now we need the amount. So for the amount, uh, the amount is actually the number of images in our animation. So if we open up our uh, animation, uh, there's actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there are 11 uh, in our animation. And for the amount, we can just put 11 here. I know that contradicts what I just said <laughs> by saying, hey, I don't want random numbers here, um, but you'll see why it doesn't really matter at the moment. Um, but we're gonna put 11 here, which is our idle animation. Now with this, we have actually created an animation. We've created an idle animation from frame data and it's sequenced for 11 step time and vector 2.all. So we can actually save this but we're not done yet because we're not actually using the animation. We created the animation, but we're not using the animation. So to use the animation, especially with a sprite animation group component, we're going to want to set up an enum, uh, which is our player state. And we can do this by coming up to the top outside of our class, and we can just write enum, lowercase e, there's a capital E as you see it wants to do, but make sure it's lowercase, lowercase e, uh, 
for enum. And then we can call this capital P player state. And then the player state allows us to actually give different states that we can just call later. This is good because one, we are going to be using states in our game. Maybe my player is running, maybe he's idle. But two, it's good to set it up as an enum because then that way you don't have to ever worry about spelling stuff wrong because it's going to autofill for you. And if it's not autofilling, you're spelling it wrong. So the two player states that we're going to have right now are going to be idle and running. Idle is going to be when we're not moving, and then running is going to be when our player is moving. So we can go ahead and save that. And now that we have an enum, what we can do is we can actually use that with our animations to split up our animations. So to do this, right below where we're loading the animations, all right, here's our idle animation. We'll come back to that in a moment. What we can do now is we can create, uh, with the group component, we have the ability to call uh, oops, I'm outside of my void. There we go. Uh, we have the ability to call animations, uh, plural. And what this does is it's going to take an object. I forget what we call a map dynamic and a sprite animation. Um, I can use my, <laughs> my terminology to, to be attending on different languages. Um, but what we can do here now is we can say, hey, we have different animations that our character can use, and they're actually going to be linked to our enum or our player state. So we can do this by calling player state, and then player state what? Well, right now we're going to set our state idle. So player state idle, and then we can use the uh, colon, is equal to our idle animation. And that's really what it's saying. Here's our animations. Right now we only have one, but we can have many. And player state dot idle is going to be equal to our idle animation. So if I ever say that my current animation should be player state dot idle, that means use my idle animation. And now that we have a list of animations, all we have to do is set our current animation. And we can do that by physically calling current and then setting it to our player state dot idle. Perfect. Now, if we save this, we do want to uh, know, uh, comment this. Let's see, uh, list of all animations. I guess makes sense to me. You can comment this whatever you want. And then this is the most important one, set current animation. And again, it kind of reads that that's what you're doing, but just in case you don't, it's good to have comments because you'll come back a week from now and like, what is this doing? Current equals what? But there we go. So if we save this and refresh, we don't see anything. Well, that's not good. Well, it is good because we just haven't added our player yet, right? We make a player, we've created our player, but we need to add our player to our game. So to do this, we can actually go into our level.dart, and right here where we're adding the level, we can just add our player. Great. Now we do want to make a variable of our player, but we'll come back to that. So now when we refresh, we should see our player, and he's right here. Now, obviously, he's not where we want him to be, but he is in our game. And as you can see, he has an anal, uh, an, yeah. <laughs> he has an idle animation, and it's already playing. And we didn't have to do much. Now, the cool thing is, if we come back here, we'll let him sit there for a little bit. We need to want we want to make another animation for when he's running. So let's see if you remember what we need to do. We already have the player state running because I wrote it earlier. You could add it if you didn't. And now what we need to do is we need to come right here, late final animation. Well, we can do late final sprite animation. And then this one is going to be called running animation. And then we need to come down here, idle animation. And we could actually copy this, select all and copy. Perfect. And then we just can change this to running animation. And then we can change where it says idle to running. And then we can change the amount, which for run, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, which is 12. And then the step time is going to be the same and the texture size is going to be the same. And if we hit save, um, then we can go into our animations and in our animations, we can add another one, player state dot running is equal to our running animation. And then if we change our current from player state dot idle to running, 
We can hit save. He's idle right now. We can reload and we get an error because it's not running. I apologize. It's run. And we'll fix this issue in a moment because as you can see, anytime you have to spell out stuff, you could spell it wrong. But now he's running. And now we have two animations and we didn't do that much work to get the second one. However, as you saw, I did make a mistake. And the reason why I made a mistake is because, well, one, I rushed through it. And two, I didn't check to see what it was called. But copying and pasting, even though it was super quick to do, is not the proper way to do stuff. If you find yourself copying and pasting, especially because we have two animations, let's say we had five, right? Three, four, five, maybe six, maybe seven, right? This is a lot of the same code over and over and over again. And we don't wanna do that. So what we can do to save ourselves a hassle in the future and make it much easier to read in the future, when this gets crazy and we have a lot of animations because our character is awesome and can do everything. What we can do now is we can think ahead and make this cleaner. So what we can do is we know that we're going to add the animations, but every single animation is going to have all of the same content. Sprite animation from frame data. Then we're going to give it an image. Then we're going to call it sequence. Then we're going to give it an amount, a step time, and a, and a vector. What we can do is we can select this, hit control period on our keyboard. Actually, we'll just... It says a local variable, so we'll just uh, control uh, copy C. Now what we can do here is we can come down and we can make our own method to use this. So we can do uh, underscore, uh, we'll call it sprite animation. Underscore is good because it's private, but also good because we know that it's ours. Sprite animation, and then we'll open this up. And then we can return everything that I just put in there. Now, just to make it easier so we know what we're returning in case we come back in the future, uh, we'll put sprite uh, animation in the front. Not like that, sprite animation. There we go. That lets us know that we're returning a sprite animation. Just good practice to know what you're returning in case you don't see return sprite animation. Um, but now what we can do is we wanna be able to use this. It still works, and I'll show you this in a moment since we copied the running one. If we, instead of calling that, we can just do sprite animation and save it and reload it. It's still gonna show us running, but this is hard-coded information and we don't want hard-coded information because then we can't reuse this. So what we can do now is we can take out what we need to change and then just add it as uh, parameters to pass inside of our, uh, when we call the sprite animation. So the first one, we know that main characters is gonna stay the same. So all of this is gonna stay the same, at least for now, because of how we have it structured. We can change it later if we have to, but for the most part, main characters are gonna stay the same. What is gonna change though is Ninja Frog. We have a lot of different characters, we have four of them. So we need to get rid of Ninja Frog and we need to replace it with something that we can pass in. So we can do this by creating a string and then we'll call it character. Now for the character, the character is gonna be special because we wanna bring the character in when we call the player. I don't wanna to have to write character, 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 character. So even though we want the character here, we don't actually want it on the method. We're gonna put it higher up in our class and just make it so that we can reference from the class. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So since we have our player class, what we need to do is we need to create a constructor. And we can do this by just calling our class player. And then inside uh, player, we need to create uh, open, do the open and close brackets. And then we're going to require by doing required, which means that we cannot call player unless we pass in this information. And the info, and we're going to call it character. And then what we need to do, because we have a constructor requiring a character, now we have the character here. We can pass the character, we can get rid of the character here. And we can pass in the character in our string of main character slash character. And we can do this very easily by just doing dollar sign and then character. We didn't define it and we didn't define it because when we do the constructor, we're requiring the character, but we also have to make a, uh, a variable for that uh, string character. There we go. And then, and because I'm not setting it, I instead of doing required character, we need to do required this. As you can see, I get an error if I just do string character, but we need to do required this dot character, which is this. And I like to put the stuff that's required just above it, just so it's easier to see. Um, this is what I'm gonna get passed in. This is what is already here. 
Um, I don't think it really matters. We can put it below as well, but I'm just in the habit of putting it above, then calling the uh, constructor. But you can do it either way. Cool. And now, as you can see, when we pass in the character, we don't get any errors. Now, if we save this, we're actually going to, let's close out of this, we're actually going to get an error in our level.dart. And the reason why we're getting the error in our level.dart is because now we have to, it's required that we pass in our character. So for our character, we can just do character now in our player, and we can pass in a string of our character. So right now we have ninja frog. We can save it, reload it, and we should get the same results. But now we can use any of our other four characters. Let's say pink man. Save it, reload it. And now we have the pink man. But let's say we also want the mask dude. Save it, reload it. And now we have the mask dude. So that quickly, we're able to just change our character. And I'll make it uh, a little easier to read that way. Perfect. Oh, that's not the one. I'm, there we go. Add the player character. And we'll do both. We'll come back to that. <laughs> so now we can change our character. So back in our character, we also want to do the same, but now we can actually pass in information into our sprite animation for the other stuff that we need to change. So we know that this state is going to change. Well, we can do string and then state. You can call it whatever you want, as long as you call it here as well. And then again, we'll do dollar sign state. So what this means is when we call in our sprite animation, you can always see it right here, we're missing a variable. And this variable, uh, we need a state. And so we can pass in a string with state. For a run animation, we're going to just do a string run. And if we save it and reload it, we should get the same results. Perfect. But we also want to pass in something else. Now, we already know that our texture size is going to be vector 2 uh, all 32 We can just leave this alone. Uh, if you plan on using different stuff, like all of our characters are 32 by 32, we could technically change this as well. Um, but we don't have to right now because it's all going to be 32, 32 for our players. But what is going to be different is the amount, right? Our frame count. So we can make another one. This one would be an int uh, for a solid number or a whole number. And then we can call this, uh, well, we can just call it amount. It doesn't have to be very specific, amount, amount. Um, but you can call it whatever you want. But now we're going to get an error where we're not passing in the amount. Well, the amount, we already know this one was for running. It was 12. I think I wrote 11, but it was 12. So we can refresh that and still we're good to go. But now the cool thing is we can actually delete everything for our idle animation, all that extra stuff that we've written, and we can just call sprite animation, pass in the state idle, capital I, and then pass in the amount, which should be 11. And I believe it's 11. Yep, it's 11. And then our run is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Perfect. So 12 and 11. But now, as you can see, we went from multiple lines of code, because technically we had all of this for each animation, to just a short, readable, very easy to read, and refresh. And again, just to prove it, we can change our player state.idle back to the idle, and now we have the idle. So that is how we can quickly add animations and play the animations, but we're not done yet. I don't want my player up here. <laughs> I want him down here or over here or over there. So what we're going to do is we can actually change this dynamically with using tiled, which is really awesome because we can go and actually place our characters wherever we want them to be. So to do this, let's switch over to idle. I meant tiled. And inside tile, uh, if you close out of your project, you can just open file or project open up the um, pixel dental tiled project and hit open. And then over here, we can double click our level one. Now with our level one, which is what we've been using, we were able to design the background. But what we can do now is we can make click this little button and we can make a new object layer. And the object layer, you can call whatever you want that makes sense, but we're just going to call it uh, capital S spawn points. And now what we can do is we can actually add spawn points into our level for different stuff. Right now we're going to do our player, but we'll also use this for uh, our fruits and stuff like that.
So to do that, we can come up here to this little uh, insert rectangle, which is the R, and we can just drag out where we want our character to be. Now keep in mind, our grid is 16 by 16, but our character is 32 by 32. So if we want the character right here, we'd have to go up a block, but we can actually do that by just dragging it out. And then because I know it's a 32 by 32, I'll actually drag it out um, 16 by 32. So we can put our character there. Um, technically, if we want, we could actually do it like this because that's what my character is. Um, so whatever uh, makes sense for you. And then I always get confused with how to undo those <laughs> selections. So we'll do it like this. Let's say we want our character right here. And our character is going to spawn at the top left. So we'd actually be right here. But once we've done that, we have the ability to give it a name and a class. So for the name, what we want to do is we can just call it player. We're not going to really use the name and code right away, but it does at least limit player over here. Now there is a way if you want to make a tile set um, or sprite sheet of all of your characters, you can actually click this button right here, insert tile, pretend we have a picture of our character right here, and you could actually select, uh, like put that in there so you can know what it is. But right now we'll just do it in the box and, and maybe do that later if we need to. Um, so we can go back here and go back to this thing to select our player. And now we can, for the class, this is where it is important, for the class, we want to also name this player, capital P, and then we can save it. So we can actually get out of tile now. We're just going to put that block in on our object layer called spawn points, and then we're going to give it a name of player and a class of player. And now back in our code, what we can do is we can go back to our level.dart file, and we need to actually draw, uh, grab that layer and say that we want to spawn stuff on it based on where we put stuff. So to do this, uh, right where under where we add our level to our game, we can make a variable called final spawn points layer. You can call this whatever you want, but that makes sense. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call level dot tile map. And then we need to get the layer by calling uh, dot get layer. Now for this, we actually need to give it a specific layer. We need to tell it what type of layer it is. And that layer is, uh, which we can do by adding these brackets right here. And that is an object group. And then what we need to do is we need to do our um, parentheses and we need to give it a string of what that is, which we called it spawn points, right? Perfect. Now that we have our layer, spawn points layer, what we need to do is we need to loop through all of the objects in that layer and split them up how we want to. So we can do this by doing four and then we'll do final spawn point in spawn points layer. So this is saying for each spawn point in the spawn points layer, but we don't want just the layer, we want the objects of the layer, which is why we call it object group. And uh, we'll do dot objects, but we're gonna get an error here and it's because it can be null, which means there's no objects. So to prevent that, what we can do is just do an exclamation point after spawn points layer. So again, this is saying, for uh, final spawn point, we're gonna, for each spawn point in spawn points layer, however, it could not exist. So we'll check if that is, and then if it does exist, then we want the objects. If it doesn't exist, well, we're not gonna get anything because it doesn't exist. And now we can go through each of them. So now because we named our player, uh, we gave it a class, we can look for those classes, which we'll use later for fruit and stuff like that. But right now we just have a, a class called player. So we can create a switch statement. And in the switch statement, we're going to look for spawn point, which is this spawn point, And we're going to check its class underscore, I'm not sure why the underscore is there because it just said class, but we're going to check its class. And if the class, which is the case, if the class is player, which is what we made it, now we can do something with our player. And to do something with our player, well, what do we want to do? Well, we want to create our player. So final player is equal to the reference of our player. And then we need to pass in our character. So for here, we're doing mask dude right now. So we can call mask dude. And then now that we've created our player, we just want to add our player, add player. 
And then we can get rid of the add player down here that we don't need and hit save. And now when we reload, it should say, hey, you're on this level. This layer of this level has a spawns point layer that you've created. I'm going to loop through all of those and I'm going to wait until I see one that's called has a class of player. And if that one has the class of player, I'm going to find it and I'm going to add the player. However, this is not going to add the player exactly how we want it to because we need to give it a position, which we'll find out. So let's hit save and refresh. Perfect. Now, our player is in the exact same spot. <laughs> and the reason why our player is in the exact same spot is because we're just adding our player, which starts at 0, 0 on the top left, right? But what we can do now that we have access to the player is we can just set its position to the spawn point position. However, we don't have the ability to do that yet. So what we can do is we can go back to our player.dart file and right here where we have our constructor, we need to add something else in here. And this something else is going to be position. Now position is built into the sprite animation group component because it comes from the sprite component. But we need to actually grab a position and then we need to set the position to the actual position of this character. And we do this by calling after the, um, the parentheses, we do colon super, which means that we're grabbing uh, information from the components above, right? So we're extending the sprite animation group component. So our player, which is right here, has a position, but now we need to set this position to the components position and we can do this by doing super and now as you can see we have all of this stuff that's in our component that we can change and we just need to make the position equal to the position that we're passing and we don't necessarily have to pass a position which is why it's not required we're probably always going to pass a, pass a position, but we don't have to. But now we're going to say pass in a position. I'll use that. I'll give it to the super's position, which will position it where you want it to be. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know in the comments if it doesn't. Super confused me. I didn't know what it meant initially, but that's all it is. We're just grabbing it for our player, adding it to the, the sprite animation group component to do with it like it needs to. It's just less code essentially. And then we can go back to our level.dart file. And then after we um, create our character, what we can do now is we can pass in the position and we need the position to be a vector two. So vector two, and these uh, could be completely different. So we do want to call a vector two. And now we need to give it an X and a Y. Well, the X and the Y that we want is the same X and Y as the spawn point. So we can do spawn point dot X, and then we can do spawn point dot Y. And if we save this and reload, we, I think we know what's gonna happen. Our character has now been placed exactly where we told him to go in the tiled map with the object layer. And to prove this, we can go back to tiled and we can select this with S and we can drag it anywhere we want and hit save and then go back and then reload. And there you go. We now are able to move our player wherever we want to. Now, I don't want to finish the video yet because I do want to show you one last thing where we can create more levels and do the same thing and make the code a little bit easier. I don't know when I would put this through, so I, I wanted to put it here. So we'll go back into Tiled and we're going to make one new map. This map, same as before, ortho orthogonal CSV right down, 40 tiles width, 23 tiles height, 16, 16, and we'll hit OK. Now we can actually um, get off our, uh, go back to our background layer. We can select everything real quick, copy, and then we can go back to our other level, uh, hit control V, and then position it into place just so we don't have to make another one, and then right click to disable it just so that we know uh, this one is different. Uh, we can select these and, oops. We can select these, copy, 
control X, paste them and move them here, just so we know that this is level two, right? You can design the levels how you want, um, but we want to rename this to background, and then we want to do the same thing. We can go back, object layer, spawn points, make sure you spell it the same, and then we'll come over to the square at the top, insert rectangle. Um, we're going to spawn our player uh, right here. And then again, make sure you give the name player and then the class player. Perfect. You don't actually have to give it a name, but I like to so it shows the icon. Great. We're going to save that. This is going to be called level-02. There we go. Saved. Good. We can go back to our code. And now what we want to do is we want to be able to call different levels by calling our level. And we kind of know how to do that, right? We have the character, we have the position, so we can do the same for level. So at the top of level, what we need to do is we just need to do final string and we'll call it level name. And then we need to make a constructor. Um, so we'll do level and this constructor we're going to do the brackets. This constructor is going to be required this dot level name. Perfect. Again, we're going to require it, which means, hey, there's a million different levels. You can't use a level unless you tell me which one you want. But now we have the ability to call different levels. And we can do this just by going back into our pixel adventer. Now we're getting an error on level and we just need to pass in our level name. And our level name is going to be a string level dash zero one. And if we save that and refresh, we're on level one. However, now let's say we need to go to level two, level dash zero two, refresh. And that's not right. Why is that not right? Because we're not actually using our level name. So <laughs> to do that, what we need to do is just instead of loading our level-01.tmx, we just need to get rid of the level-01.tmx. And we can replace this with dollar sign level name. Perfect. And now this is no longer hard coded. And then when we refresh, now we're going to get an error. All right, it had nothing to do with spelling, nothing to do with PubSec YAML. It just needed a quick reboot because we created a new TMX file while we were playing our game and then the system didn't know it existed. So a quick reboot fixed it. Um, but yeah, so just to prove my point, we can go back between level one, level two, just by changing the level name and it works perfect. And then if we're on the level and we need to change mask dude back to say ninja frog, we can do that as well. Again, we can change that later when we're actually calling it, but there we go. I hope this video is very helpful for you. I know we went over a lot, so I hope you're still watching, but definitely click the subscribe button and check out the video right here. We're gonna be adding in player controls, which I know is exciting so we can move our character around. So I'll see you in that video and goodbye.